over Scotland and Orkney, and for some reason, there was one exactly the same size, shape, and consistency in La Bolivia. And this was found right next to Lake Titicaca. I could not believe it when I saw this. It completely blew my mind. I thought I was, I was, I'd lost it or something. Um, so the Scots, who know, might have been traveling over to this part of the world. And the interesting thing about the Scottish ones is that they're all very specific platonic solids, very sophisticated geometrical forms being carved out of solid rock. There's some very beautiful ones, like this one here, called the Toei Stone, the Toei Ball, from Aberdeenshire in Scotland. And this just shows you, just to get a sense of um, the sort of shape and size of it. You can see here, it's got six uh, protrusions on it, or six bosses or knobs. This is, there's about 300 like this have been found all over Scotland. And it made me think, when I was in the museum, that perhaps the Scots had been there because I recognized their sort of grumpy look on a statue in the museum. Though that I think we have proof. And interestingly, you see the headgear here. This is something you actually find in Britain going back about two and a half, three thousand years. And the look on the faces says it all. There's more around Lake Titicaca, not just Tiwanaku, not just Pumapunku, not just the Island of the Sun. There's a site here called Chiquito, which is um, over on the see over on the left part over there below Puno. This is an interesting site as well. This is called the Temple of Fertility, and it's absolutely fascinating me because not only have we got polygonal walls going around the edge with strange shapes carved on them and precision engineered stones with that puffy pillow-like look, but we also have these what are thought to be phalluses. But some people actually believe they're mushrooms. Now, the uh, local people certainly think they're phalluses, and they actually go there to get fertile. No joke. You can laugh. Yeah, all right, but no joke. They go there, the local people do, to actually, the girls, to actually get fertile and guarantee pregnancy. And it's a tradition that goes way, way back. Not just here, but in other parts of the world. But many of them uh, have now been kind of turned upside down by Christians because they were offended by them. Uh. Even though half the population of the planet has similar designs. <laughs> and there's other, there's many, many things. Underwater temples have been found around Lake Titicaca. There's traditions and underground, underwater bases there. It just goes on and on, this whole area. And of course we have a Marumuru. This is like a carved doorway to nowhere. And the tradition state that if you actually people have got, actually managed to go through there in meditation and got stuck in the rock and they're still there. Uh, and is that there? apparently there's a tunnel here that goes all the way to Cusco, several hundred miles away. If you actually go out the back, there is an entrance to a tunnel going in two directions. No joke, and if you come with us, we'll show you that. No one else will show you that. And, uh, and this, this shape, this T-shape, is something that JJ's been researching, but also, it's exactly the same shape as the pillars we find at Gebekli Tepe in southeast Turkey. And why this part of the world is fascinating to me is because down in that area uh, is where the Sumerians were from, or the Mesopotamia area at least. And this is the, this is the uh, stone, sandstone bowl that was found in the 1950s. On the, on the coast, really, of Lake Titicaca. It's now in the Gold Museum in La Paz. We take you there to see this on our tour. And it was actually used by pigs to eat their food from. And actually, it only got discovered and, and, and taken. And so, so, so people think it's a hoax. People think it's like a, some kind of ancient alien hoax. But it was found in the 1950s. And it was used by pigs to eat food from as a trough and yes, yeah, so why would you hoax that? You know, why would you hoax that in the 1950s and use it to feed pigs? It just doesn't make any sense. But it's got Sumerian and proto-Sumerian script, as well as a Mara script. So it's like the Rosetta Stone of the Andes. That's what they think it is now. And it's even been translated. And, uh, and you can actually, if you Google this, you can actually find this online. I don't have time to show you all this now. But it's different incantations to different gods and goddesses based upon Sumerian gods and goddesses. And this is the other side of the bowl, has more. And so it just goes on. And it talks about the goddess Nia, which is like linked with the Sumerians. There's some detail here. And it even talks about fertility in some of the text on the bowl, which is what we're seeing with these sites that actually fertility generators to guarantee seeds and crops and humans 
be fertile and to continue the human race. There's also the Bukotia monolith that was found nearby, it's about 10 miles south of uh, Tiwanaku, and this has some very, very strange inscriptions on it as well, which have been related to Sumerian. And it dates, the bowl and this dates to around 3000 BC. This is the time the Sumerians were active in Mesopotamia. Also at Pakotia, where this was found, these statues were found as well, which are now on display in a secret room at Tiwanaku site, which, of course, we sneaked into. <laughs> and this is actually how I made, I made most of my discoveries, to be honest with you, by sneaking into places. And uh, here it is again on the top, the top two, in the middle and top there. There's actually an identical one on the left, very, very similar on Easter Island. And all over the Pacific, we find these kneeling tiki statues. The Stein is another site around Lake Titicaca. It has beautiful chilpa towers. These are funerary towers, but they have very intricate 3D carvings on them. You can see that in some of the images here. This one again was built by the Koya people, who were around before the Inca, but after the Viracochum people. You can see the little uh, lizard on the stone there. We have beautiful 3D relief carvings here, and serpent carvings and elongated skulls at Silastani. And again, we have these sort of tiki statues, which are found all over the Pacific. And we have serpents and other such things all over this site, as well as protrusions and knobs like we find around Cusco here as well. This one here is actually identical to one on, East, on Easter Island. So we're getting the same stonework in all these different places. There's even stone circles at Silastani, like we find all over England. And these are all astronomically aligned. There's another site called Katimba, a bit further around the lake. And again, we have this puffy polygonal stonework with 3D relief carvings, as you can see down there on the bottom. We have serpents carved on them. And these, these, these are all part, look at the 3D one on the bottom left there. And what gets me is that well, as soon as I went to Katimbo, I knew I'd seen all this before. A couple of years before that, I'd taken my first visit to a site called Gebekli Tepe in southeast Turkey. Now this is Katimbo. That is Gebekli Tepe in southeast Turkey. This is Silastani. This is Gebekli Tepe in Southeast Turkey. So we're finding these direct correlations between these different parts of the world. But the thing is, Gebekli Tepe is dated to at least 12,000 years ago. At least. So are the sites in Peru that old? Is it from the same culture? We find similar motifs at a site called Bukhara, which is further around the lake. And we see the 3D relief carvings almost identical. And again here, these lizards with these protrusions and these knobs and so forth. And almost identical to what we find at this is at Gebekli Tepe in southeast Turkey with the serpents, the lizards. And even Klaus Schmidt, before he died, he was the, the main excavator at Gebekli Tepe for many years, um, claimed that he actually thinks it might be 14,000 years old. So we're looking at a whole other level of uh, age here. This is from Bukhara. This is just around the Lake Titicaca area. And yep, this is from Gebekli Tepe. So we're finding almost identical 3D carving. The fact that this was happening 12,000 years ago at Gebekli Tepe is quite astonishing. Just shows you some more images here. And again, you would think this could be from Peru, but no, this is from Gebekli Tepe. This beautiful kind of, you have this sort of similar style to what we saw at Oyate Tambo, sort of scooping of the stone. We have the 3D relief carvings of lizards and critters and serpents. Here's just a close up of some of the uh, critters at, uh, I don't know if they're called, they're critters, they're just different strange animals. And this is actually from Pukara once again. There's me posing with some kind of monster that was found at Pukara. I'm not sure which one's the monster. <laughs> but the polygonal walls, this is something that kind of has grabbed my attention. Being a megalithomaniac, I'm kind of obsessed by this. Um, and you can see these again, these are from different parts of the world. The top left is Cusco, the top right is Italy. Yeah, Italy. The bottom left there is one of the pyramids on the Giza Plateau. The bottom right here is Easter Island. So we find the same very difficult construction style all over the world. This is actually from Osaka Castle in Japan. This is one of the ones from Italy, it's me posing there. 
and there's about 50 sites like this all along the western coast of Italy, also in Greece and Albania, uh, which no one can explain, and yet they're there, and they've got some of the largest stones in Europe, and they're identical to ancient Peru. This is in Turkey. This is when we, we went here with Graham Hancock on one of our uh, Turkey tours in 2013. This is a place called El Ajahoyak. There's also a site called Hattusa as well. These are Hittite sites, uh, date to around 1500 BC apparently. And then we have massive puffy polygonal stonework identical to ancient Peru. We continue researching and exploring and JJ and I spent a few more days, a week really, around Lake Titicaca, specifically in Tiwanaku and Pumapunku. There's very interesting statues there. These are the statues, different statues of Viracocha. This one is actually carved from diorite, which is the, one of the hardest stones on the planet. And you can see some of the interesting symbols on the uh, torso there. And these are some of the other statues that were found in Tiwanaku. These ones on the left there are found in the main temple, this one here, but this one is actually apparently on display, or was on display, at the Berlin Museum. It's clearly a bird motif. Here's some other ones here. The one on the right is actually 25 feet tall. But this is a site called the Cantatelita Temple, which is the eastern part of Tiwanaku. And something caught my attention when I was there on our last trip. I actually spotted in the distance, outside the fence, these, which is basically another Viracocha statue. Now, I didn't, it wasn't my, I'm not in a position to kind of turn it over and excavate it and we'll take it home with me or anything. It was nine feet tall after all. Uh, but if, I guarantee, if you turned it over, there would be carvings and glyphs and other such things like we find on the other Viracocha statue. So I, you know, so I kind of, I found this. This was covered in grass. This is, obviously the grass had been cut away on this private bit of land and a discovery was made. So when, you know, if you come on our tours, you'll make discoveries, I promise. But we'll at least go and see this again when we go back there in November. I also managed to sneak <coughs> into a second hidden room at the Tiramaku Museum. Now, I'm quite, I seem to be quite good at this, considering I'm quite a big chap, you know. Um, but when I was there, they, they were building, a, they were doing some building work on the roof of the, the huge museum on site at Tiramaku. And we got in the first room, JJ and I both went in the first room, but there's a second room which I'd never seen open before. And they'd left it, I could see like a, a, a little glint of light coming through the gap in this door. So I pulled the door open, snuck in and closed it behind me. And in this room were 30 artifacts that itself that none of my colleagues had ever seen before hidden in the museum at Tiwanaku. And there's just some of them here, and you can see some of the beautiful pieces. And this, is, this has never been published, so I was the first to publish this. And you can see this amazing piece here, which has like, um, almost like crystalline pieces coming in with um, pen hexagons there. This piece here as well was also in that room. And this has glyphs on it, which have yet to be deciphered. There's many more you can't quite see on there. There's much more going on here than people realize. And the fact that stuff is being hidden, there were, I mean, officially, there were once 50 or more skulls on display here, and now there's like two. And these are the elongated skulls that we find all over this part of the world. Again, this is just an aerial shot with the jetpack of Tiwanaku. So the area down here is where the discoveries were made. This is the